In 1945, the Second World War ended. With the end of World War II in 1945, Korea was liberated from Japanese colonial rule, leading to the severing of all diplomatic relations. It was not for another 20 years in 1965 when the two countries were once again able to re-establish diplomatic ties and begin an era of normalized diplomatic relations. We have entered into an era in which Korea and Japan will mutually seek to bring about joint profit, security and prosperity. However, even after about half a century of promoting friendship and working for growth in East Asia, conflict still exists between the two countries due to the Yasukuni Shrine controversy, distortion of history in Japanese textbooks, the Dokto issue and other unresolved affairs of the past. Japan and Korea are two critically important nations in the Asia-Pacific era. I think if better relations are fostered between these two nations, uh, that this can be a source of stability for Northeast Asia and important for the wider world. Reverend Sun Myung Moon has played a crucial role in developing relations between Korea and Japan over the past 50 years. During the Pacific Rim era, it will become difficult to expect peace in the world without achieving peace in Northeast Asia. Korean and Japanese citizens, let us now come to our senses and contribute to peace for mankind. Our role will be very crucial in this endeavor. Reverend Moon has led many non-governmental diplomatic projects, mainly through the arts and culture, bringing about significant changes in Korean international relations in an effort to ease world conflict. He has led many peace-loving people all around the world to carry out the mission. What changes have they implemented? Last December, at an international academic conference held at Sun Moon University in Cheonan, Korea, distinguished Korean and key scholars led debates and speeches together with university students. 400 participated in this event. I discussed today the influence and impact of the work of Dr. Sun Myung Moon. He has established and worked through both the Unification Church and the UPF to carry out various activities, including victory over communism, reform and renewal of the United Nations, the strengthening of the family, and the study of the principles of peace. The scholars discuss the impact of this one religious man's life and work. He spent his whole life working toward bringing about a peaceful world. He deeply pondered how to eradicate the never-ending conflict and hostility that the world faces today. He especially contributed to the improvement of Korean-Japanese relations and to the unfinished task of Korean unification. So for many Koreans, especially of his generation, um, the biggest, worst enemy for them was the Japanese. So he really tried to love them. Then uh, he began uh, many missionary outreach reach in Japan. He brought many Japanese to Korea. He was one of the forerunners in bringing about the normalization of Korean-Japanese diplomacy and saving Japan from falling under communist influence. The International Federation for Victory Over Communism was established in Japan in 1968, the same year it was established in Korea. It was brought about in order to overcome the errant philosophies of communist thought and bring about a sincere philosophy of conservatism and democracy. In 1965, Reverend Moon set out on his first world speaking tour. The first country he visited was Japan. He chose to go to Japan first in order to form a fervent desire to prevent the country from becoming communist. To put it simply, he gave us a purpose for living. After the war, many Japanese citizens were unclear about their reason for living. Thanks to Reverend Moon's philosophy of live for the sake of others, we were given a new purpose for living. This helped the young people in particular. 
At the time, many countries were turning to communism. Communist student movements were flaring up all over Japan. At that time, the universities were like fortresses for revolution. Leftist thought was gaining momentum. Yokohama, Osaka, and Fukuoka. Leftists were in charge of Kyoto City administration for 28 years. When Reverend Sun Myung Moon came to Japan, he was determined to thwart the communization of Japan through the uniting and strengthening conservative and patriotic groups. Victory over communism members were dispatched to Chosun University and other schools, which were the main locations of the General Association of Korean Residents in Japan. They presented lectures about the victory over communism ideology because the communization of Japan would threaten Northeast Asia and world peace. Victory over communism efforts at Chosun University were led by Ms. Arakawa and Ms. Aoto through an aggressive election campaign effort. They were able to ensure the defeat of the leftist governor, Ninagawa, who had been in power in Kyoto for 28 years. Reverend Moon's movement received widespread support in Japanese society. In the 60s, Japan was ready to overcome the shock of defeat in World War II and was undergoing rapid economic growth. The university students of that generation wanted peace, not war. This is why the speeches of Reverend Moon gained so much attention. Reverend Moon is considered to have played a crucial role in preventing the communization of Japan and contributing to today's stable democracy. Reverend Sun Myung Moon wanted us to fight communism because it brought about more slaughter and carnage than any other philosophy in human history. Combining the Soviet Union, China, Cambodia, and other countries, the death toll must be over 150 million. This was the biggest threat to peace. If we could not resolve this issue, the world of peace that Reverend Moon and humankind longed for would never come about. At that time, the victory over communism movement was gaining support from many leaders in Japan. Reverend Moon's vision and contribution for a peaceful world was widely acknowledged. A formidable leader has risen out of Asia. His name is Sun Myung Moon. I feel so refreshed by the noble teachings that I have received from Reverend Moon. I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for these magnificent words of inspiration. Thank you. I'm very appreciative of your great speech. The movement to bring an end to the communist era and end the Cold War continued for many years. Reverend Moon met Gorbachev and showed support for the Open Door Reform. Another landmark event in this effort was his visit to Premier Kim Il-sung in North Korea. This was the first non-governmental one-on-one -one meeting that anyone had held with the then North Korean Premier. The meeting was to become an historical occasion. I dare say that Reverend Moon's teachings of unification and new universal thought which combine Korean values with Eastern philosophy, opened the door to heaven. He has become the representative and symbol of the peace movement that transcends race and religion to bring about world peace. With the crisis of communism past, Reverend Moon went on to establish various movements to improve relationships between Korea and Japan. He was active in creating academic and cultural exchange movements to bring about world peace and international security. 
He sponsored ongoing international seminars, reaching out beyond Japan and Korea, and inviting great scholars and specialists from around the world to help improve the chaotic world condition. I feel as though we have produced tremendous results. I feel that private relations are the most important when it comes to Korea-Japan relations. Without the mutual understanding, support, and cooperation of the people, it is difficult to bring about political change. Economics played a crucial role in Korean-Japanese relations in 1970. This was apparent in the rapid increase of trade between the two countries, which rose in volume from $210 million in 1965 to $1,243,000,000 in 1970. The two countries cooperated actively for mutual profit. One of the more visionary ideas that Reverend Moon has had for the relational improvement between Korea and Japan is the creation of an undersea tunnel to link the two nations. He argued for its significance, not just as the most important infrastructure for traffic, but for improving overall ties as well. He is proposing that through this tunnel, and others like it, the world can become literally one. This tunnel will connect the Japanese people to the mainland and bring the hearts of Korean and Japanese people closer together. I agree that this tunnel is still necessary. Reverend Moon first made the case for the building of this tunnel back in 1981. The 10th International Conference on the Unity of the Sciences in Seoul attended by several Nobel Peace Prize winners and world scholars. If these highways were constructed, the three Asian countries would be linked through the highway and they would become one. The economic and cultural exchange between them would be so frequent that it would literally enable them to form an Asian common community. October 1986, construction began on a pilot model of the Korea-Japan Tunnel in Karatsu Saga in Japan. This tunnel would be 235 kilometers long, running along the ocean floor and the first in history to connect Korea and Japan. Put it simply, a world of peace would entail a new culture. Concretely, it would involve not just the tunnel, but the creation and spread of many new roads. The realm of economics would develop and contribute to unification between North and South Korea. The creation of this tunnel would create a community infrastructure in Eastern Asia and contribute greatly to world peace. Leaders from both countries as well as the public emphasize the necessity of improving relations through such projects as the Korea-Japan Tunnel, the starting point for the two countries to become closer. Korea and Japan are the two democratic countries with the most experience in the market economy. In reality, both Korea and Japanese economies are combined, so that the two countries mutually depend on each other. For this reason, it is imperative that they become closer. On site at the investigation for the inclined shaft for the Korea-Japan tunnel in Fukuoka, the geological survey was completed. Now, actual construction on the tunnel can begin. The undersea tunnel connecting Korea and Japan is expected to bring the two countries closer and bring about substantial economic improvement. Tremendous economic results were achieved through the development of the Euro Tunnel, which connects Britain and France. Between 20 and 30 million people pass through the tunnel each year. We expect that if the two countries are connected through this highway, it will become a huge step in the realization of peace. We are working hard to reach that goal. The undersea tunnel is a much more time and cost-effective alternative to transportation by ships. We will now lead you through the tunnel. This is the undersea tunnel itself. We are using the same construction methods as those used above ground. It is the most suitable method for a traffic tunnel. 
This spot is zero meters above sea level. We have come 70 meters below the entrance. We are here at sea level. From here we go below the surface of the ocean. We hope that this tunnel will bring about the increase of trade in not only Korea and Japan, but in Eurasia and beyond. With the necessity of this tunnel always on our minds, we are actively researching on how to make it a reality. We are still developing the best techniques for this process, but with the tools we have available, it will take about 10 to 15 years to dig the whole tunnel. A new channel is born one that will substantially bring about active exchange between not only Korea and Japan, but the whole world. Reverend Sun Myung Moon promoted this tunnel from as early as 30 years ago as the stimulus that would bring about world peace. The construction of the Korea-Japan tunnel will lead to mutual goodwill between the two countries. In the case that Korea is reunified, a railroad passing through the Korean peninsula can be built, passing through Eurasia and transforming Korea into a distribution hub. The two countries, which are gradually coming closer together, also co-hosted the 2002 Korean-Japanese World Cup. A few years later, the Peace Cup the two nations co-hosted at the same time helped further friendly sporting ties between the two countries. It seemed there is nothing like the power of culture in breaking down the barriers between countries. The greatest example of this is the Korean Hallyu Wave. Various teachers of Korean script in Japan, the Humin Jongum Global Association, were invited to the National Assembly. They met actor Song Il Guk, who gained international fame as star of the Korean drama series Jumong. I am working hard as an actor to bring Korea, Japan, and China closer together. Song Il Guk a world-renowned Hallyu star has direct experience in bringing countries closer together through culture. I would like to tell a story about when I went to Japan for the first time to promote Jumong. I was taking a break in a coffee shop when someone came up to me and told me that they were a Korean resident of Japan. After the beginning of the Hallyu wave, the attitudes of people towards Korean residents completely changed. I was so happy to hear those words. I feel that through the cultural exchange between Japan and Korea, maybe the walls between our two countries can be torn down. It is apparent that learning each country's language and cultures is the important element in the communication and understanding between the two countries. Korean women who marry Japanese men and move there are now teaching Korean to Japanese people. These women were commended for their work as Korean teachers and honored by the National Assembly and the Hu Min jong -um Global Association. The Hu Min jong -um Global Association is an organization established in 2011 with the goal of globalizing the Korean language and culture with a focus on Korean residents in Japan. They are currently carrying out a diverse array of projects. Let us use Hangul to bring about a closer, more intimate relationship between Japan and Korea. I want to warmly welcome you all to the National Assembly today. We met at the awards ceremony with award winner teacher Chiyun Mi, who is one of 400 Korean teachers and 5,000 students currently active throughout Japan. Until middle school, I grew up in Asan, Chungcheongnam-do, in Korea. My oldest sister received an international marriage blessing with an American man. After that, <laughs> our whole family moved to the United States. Ji and Mi carries out lectures in a broadcasting center in Echizan, Fukui, in Japan. <laughs> In an office at the broadcasting station, many from around the area gathered to learn Korean. Her class is steadily gaining popularity. There are not many places on cable TV where one can learn Korean. I think this is why her class is so popular, and there were so many people who wanted to learn from her. 
The students who seek to learn and master Korean have grown quite proficient in their studies. Once they start learning, they are surprised. There are a lot of proverbs and sayings that are common to Korean and Japanese. For example, the saying, even the monkey falls out of the tree, is exactly the same in both languages. After all, the origin of both of our languages is the same. Then my students ask me, are you saying that I speak like a Korean? Where did these students get their passion for learning Hangul? The reason why I started to study Korean is I wanted to watch Korean dramas without having to look at the subtitles. As we overcame the mutual misunderstandings and prejudices we had against each other, one by one, I feel like Korea and Japan have been able to become closer. Her husband always picks her up from her class, which ends late. <laughs> I feel that we are doing very important work here. I feel like we are building a peace bridge between our countries, Korea and Japan. Teaching Korean may be difficult, but please do your best. She always feels revitalized when she receives the support of her family. Reverend Moon believed that the best method for removing hostility and bringing about world peace was international marriage. Those who believed in the importance of family and the unification principle supported this ideal and participated in the international mass wedding ceremonies as members of one family under God. <laughs> Is marriage really the answer to all of the conflicts between countries? To answer this question, we went to a cattle farm in Hokkaido. Mr. An Samgyu manages a pretty large-scale farm with over 500 cows. He is a Korean farmer who is highly praised for his work in livestock breeding. He has brought about success through his modern, cutting-edge facilities and attention to hygiene. How did he end up here in northern Japan? I was a part of an international wedding ceremony. Before receiving the blessing, my wife told me that since she came from a family of four daughters, I would have to go and live with her in Japan and inherit her family's farm. Moving to an unfamiliar country to manage a farm was a task that required strong determination and no little courage. With his devotion to his family, he has brought about happiness little by little. His devotion soon brought about the appreciation and empathy of the community around him. He works hard and is very kind. He receives a lot of praise for those qualities. He is known as the best husband in the neighborhood. Since I heard that he was a hard worker, it put my heart at ease, and I was able to entrust the management to him. I really appreciate him. He works two or three times harder than all of the young people around him. To the Matsuis, nothing is more important than family. Things like national borders do not even exist in their minds. Instead, there is only love. International mass wedding ceremony. Broken families are becoming more and more common in this current age. This wedding ceremony always gathers a lot of attention from the press. 
The act of marriage implies the creation of a couple and a family, correct? A man and woman become a couple. Once they live together, of course, they will sometimes have lovers' quarrels. But through the love they have for each other, they will ultimately come to understand and love each other even more. Through the love of couples such as these, we believe that countries can come to understand each other more deeply. International Mass Wedding Ceremony People who believe that world peace can be brought about through mutual understanding. Today, those who hold dear to their hearts the importance of the family are beginning their new lives. Yamanashi Prefecture, a typical farming village. This place is famous for mulberry trees. Married couple Song Min Han and Miki Kusunoki welcome news reporters. <laughs> At first, I wanted to have a wedding in Korea. But since she is going to live with me in Korea for the rest of her life anyway, I decided that for her sake, I would try to come and live in Japan for a year. Mr. Song Min Han later changed his mind and moved into his wife's parents' village home. The couple brought about tremendous success in a town where most of the young people had already left. Their story was so exceptional that it was featured on Japanese television several times. The village had lost most of its vitality as the demand for silk had steadily decreased. In light of this situation, the couple decided to make the village prominent again, but this time by mulberry leaf instead of silk. Their gamble paid off and met with tremendous success. Since we are doing something that no one else is doing, I feel that there is a considerable chance of success, and I have conviction that we can create an enormous vision through this endeavor. Taking charge of Kusunoki's father's mulberry farm and transforming it into a successful business, the couple endured many difficulties while continuing to love each other through it all. How do they feel about each other today? Mm, when I first met her, mm, I felt that uh, I was not worthy of her. Yeah. Ah, I felt that I met a truly magnificent person. The tea house that the couple established overflows with love and is often sought out by the elders of the village. The young couple has brought life and vigor back to the village, and Mr. Song Min Han has won the hearts of all the villagers. He is such a remarkable young man. I'm very impressed with him. I feel like I have gained another son. I believe that if more people like Song Min Han come to Japan, Korean-Japanese relations will improve considerably. The way the lovey-dovey couple cherishes and supports each other is a model example showing us the power of love and what a true family should look like. What is their opinion on the advantages of international marriage? After marrying a Japanese woman, uh, I've come to appreciate Japanese culture and the heart of Japanese people. They endure in times of need and uh, will support you wholeheartedly when uh, you need an extra push. The couple sings a song of affection. Perhaps this harmony is a manifestation of the time and effort they have invested in each other. I am very grateful that I married a Korean man, as our family could truly become one in heart. Uh, and I was able to understand the passionate heart of Korea in its truest sense. <laughs> Perhaps the firm love that forms through efforts to understand one's partner is the cornerstone of a happy family, a happy village, and a happy country. At the heart of the international mass wedding ceremony lies the promise to leave behind hate 
and create a world without conflict by connecting to a new lineage. International marriages, multicultural families, is no longer a novel form of family in this global era, which requires mutual understanding and cooperation from us instead of clinging to one culture and excluding others. As the number of multicultural families multiplied, service projects to help them have blossomed. In the forefront of this multicultural effort is Etsuko Uda, seen here receiving an award for her efforts at a ceremony in Seoul. I am Japanese. I know that historically, Japan and Korea have not had a good relationship. I have worked hard with the hope that one day Korea and Japan can become one. Being married to a Korean man for 30 years in Korea, she more than anyone knows the struggles of immigrants. As a first-generation member of a multicultural family, Etsuko Udo has been working to support multicultural families by implementing various programs and support projects for them. I am very happy and grateful that I am able to live and work here in Korea. I feel a sense of duty as well. I often wonder about how Japan and Korea can bring about a better relationship with uh, each other. Among the many people who agree with and support Mrs. Uda, the one who has given her the most reliable support is her husband, who works as a nonprofit dentist in Seoul. She works hard for multicultural benefit enterprises and shoulders a lot of responsibility. She often talks to me about the difficulties of being in a multicultural family, so when she asked me if I could help her, I definitely empathized with her. Today, one girl has come to receive treatment at the nonprofit. Beneficiaries always visit the dental clinic with a relaxed heart since it opens its doors to everyone. Thanks to President Uda, I was able to receive treatment for free. He actually started doing nonprofit treatments before he met his wife. I first started giving free treatments when 30 doctors and nurses from Japan came to Korea to give free treatments. That was in the beginning of 1970, when Korea's economic situation was very poor. At that time, Japan's economy had developed quite greatly, and they had considerably more advanced technologies and skills than Korea. Perhaps one good deed begets another, as in this case of Japanese civilian medical volunteer work, in which warm hearts cross national borders. This Japanese-Korean couple is carrying out a life of service for their neighbors in need. I came to start working in nonprofit organizations after realizing that non-governmental service treatments can combine their efforts to resolve misunderstandings between parties and can contribute to world peace. The ideal of the true family lies at the root of the many people working for world peace. One of such organizations is the Women's Federation for World Peace. The WFWP was established in 1992 by Dr. Hakja Han Moon. The organization has worked as a bridge between Korea and Japan and has made substantial steps for world peace through their work for the improvement of women's rights. A leading example of the WFWP's role in non-governmental diplomacy is the Sisterhood Movement. The first Sisterhood ceremony was held in 1994. Since then, over 179,000 Korean and Japanese women pairs came into being. The Women's Federation has laid a cornerstone for Korean-Japanese relations. Dr. Hakja Han Moon is also actively involved in the promotion of various non-profit movements around the world. 
She was also the first Asian woman to give a keynote address at a program held at the United Nations in New York. In 1993, the Women's Federation joined the first tier in the UN's Economic and Social Council list of advisory organizations and has maintained its official status ever since. The Women's Federation is based in Korea and has branches in 160 countries. They carry out international peace projects based on the values of true love and true families. The pursuit of profit can create sharp fault lines between countries and international society. With the support and understanding of leaders worldwide, the international activities led by Dr. Hak Han Moon has exercised great influence. Dr. Han, who stands at the forefront of non-governmental diplomatic relations, touched the hearts of the non-governmental delegations of Korea and Japan through her keynote address. 이분 보면 한국 여성의 대표일 뿐 아니고. 세계에도 하나도 부끄럽지 않아 너무 자랑스러운 그런 부인이십니다. It is time to reconsider the unwavering non-governmental efforts to bring about the smooth resolution of the tension in Japan and Korea and in the so-called new cold era in Northeast Asia. 우리는 동북아의 정세를 염려하고 있습니다. 세계 평화는 아시아에서부터 세계로 전파될 것이 틀림없습니다. As loving global peaceful citizens, Dr. Hakja Han Moon and the late Dr. Sun Myung Moon worked in tandem to harmonize Japanese and Korean relations and to bring peace in Northeast Asia and beyond. Their accomplishments throughout their lives to bring understanding and cooperation are creating ripples that echo throughout the whole world.